Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm your host, Eugene Chan. Our guest tonight is Mr. Ken Slam, who is the current president of the Hong Kong Golf Association. He has also been the captain of the Hong Kong Golf Club, and most recently, he was the leader of the golf team that was part, that was part of the Hong Kong delegation to the Tokyo Olympics. We have invited him here tonight to talk to us about where golf is as a sport in Hong Kong and whether it should be promoted further in our society. Welcome, Mr. President. Thank you, Eugene. Thanks for having me. So you have recently returned from the Olympics in Tokyo. What a great occasion. We see all the cheers and happiness. Can you share with us, with the viewers, about Hong Kong's participation in golf at the Olympics? And how did we go? Well, it is a tremendous honor for the, me to, uh, to be there uh, together with uh, our player Tiffany and our Kelly uh, Aaron to represent uh, Hong Kong for the, the Olympics. Um, in um, Hong Kong, we do not have a the big um, golf uh, population and to be able to have uh, Tip Tiffany representing us is a tremendous uh, honor. Uh, it says a lot about her work ethics and also the team uh, behind it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year, of course, uh, going to the uh, Olympic is a tremendous uh, honor mm -hmm. wearing the Hong Kong China badge. Exactly. Um, we were in awe. Uh, about the performance of uh, our the teammates. Mm -hmm. um, it's good news one after another. Um, as a sportsman, as someone who is so in touch with uh, the sports, sports development in Hong Kong, it is just a tremendous uh, joy and honour to be there. Mm -hmm. So how do we go this year in terms of golf results? Well, golf results, um, when Tiffany arrived, she actually was arrived uh, prepared. Um, she is physically the, much stronger than, uh, than before. She adds uh, more length to her the long game, meaning hitting the ball longer. Okay. Her short game, meaning the, around the greens, the putting, chipping, very, very sharp. Mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, probably a little bit of a the, um, disappointment that on the first uh, day, um, actually on the first round, in the first round and the uh, first part of the second round, her putts were not uh, falling. Right. Um, you mean they're putting the hole, putting the ball into the, the hole? Yeah, after, after, after she reached the green, you know, um, with uh, a lot of uh, good uh, performance, you know, and just uh, failing a bit, you know, to convert those into the birdies. You okay. Know? Yeah. Um, but that has uh, started to change after the, the um, second day, the second half of the second day. Mm -hmm. And then for the third day and the fourth day, the, everything click. Mm -hmm. um, we also mm -hmm. have some the equipment uh, change and improvement. Oh, um, in, in, the, in the meantime, so it, it's, a, it's a quest mm -hmm. for the for, for improvement, and the three team and the three our three man team work uh, very closely uh, so, together. So it's really a team team sport, isn't it? It is an individual sport, but uh, we cannot underestimate you know the teamwork, the teamwork that we have on site, the teamwork that we have in participating in, uh, in the sport, and also the teamwork that we have uh, supporting us, you know, the um, um, all together. Um, and it, it was great, you know, for mm -hmm, her to mm -hmm. finish uh, the third and fourth round uh, in the underpass. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not easy to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the third round in particular, the second the second nine of the uh, um, of, of the of the third round, there were egos, birdies, you know, and it was tremendous joy, you know, mm -hmm. to uh, to watch. Right, Ken, what's the stand of golf like in Hong Kong in general? I mean, who has been our highest international ranking so far? Well. Of course, Tiffany is uh, um, Tiffany is uh, um, a highest ranking female golfer, um, right. and she qualified for the Olympics, you know, twice in a row. And she played in the highest level, the LPGA in the US. That's the highest level of uh, women's golf. But besides that, I think one thing we should we should all know is we were this close from also having a male representative. Right. Our Jason Hack is actually the first alternate in many different categories, um, basically for for golf whether it's on the men's side or the women's side, it's only 60, only 60 golfers right. of each gender that can make it to the Olympics. Okay. That's a very vigorous qualifying regime. Right. And we had uh, um, 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 Tiffany qualify comfortably, mm -hmm. which is tremendous. So how many will, yeah. will be competing for the 60 places? Um, everybody in the world. All right. I so see. realistically, realistically, you're talking about, uh, say, four, 500 you know, the, um, golfers. Wow, so Hong Kong done very well. Well, I think we have done tremendously well. 
um, um, with uh, Jason was this close, you know, right. of uh, being able to represent, you know, the, uh, Hong Kong. And Jason actually was a part of the team that helped us won the, the silver medal in the, um, in the national games. Oh, okay. And we also we always do well, you know, in those competitions as well. Yeah, Captain, I want to ask you: all sports yeah. will go through different phases of popularity. Yeah. I'm sure you have some figures. I mean, how popular is golf as a sport in Hong Kong? I remember at one stage, everyone's carrying golf bags on the street. Yeah. And, and for a little while, you don't see them, but now you're seeing them again. How popular is it? I mean, how many, do you have any figures of how many people do play golf in Hong Kong? Yes, we do. Um, and Eugene, very good observations. Actually, um, I remember in the uh, mid 90s, you see a lot of people carrying the golf bags on the street because that was a time when we, have, when we had a lot of driving ranges in, mm -hmm. in, in Hong Kong. But uh, because, you know, of uh, shortage of land, some of these uh, driving ranges, you know, the, um, has alternate use, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they cease to be ranges. Um, so that also... The so how many do we have? How many golfers do you have in Hong Kong? In, 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 um, in terms of golfers, we have about uh, 20,000 that right. would go on course uh, regularly. Right. And in terms of other statistics, uh, um, including those provided by our equipment uh, supplier, it says there would be about 100,000. Right. That would uh, that would buy golf equipment, would go to driving ranges, or would go to indoor golf, or would go to uh, courses occasionally. Mm -hmm. How will you compare that with mainland or other Asian or international cities? Is is golf a popular sport as compared to them, or we are not as popular in Hong Kong? Well, Hong golf should be a very very popular sport. Um, right. It is. Uh, Undoubtedly, you know, whatever statistic you check, it is one of the most popular sports in the world. One example is uh, golf, you know, would have its dedicated uh, TV channel. Oh, okay. So how many sports, you know, get that, right? So, um, and, um, and, and, and really, you know, um, if we would have more facilities, we probably would have more golfers. Mm -hmm. um, may I just share with you, for example, you know, the, compared to our neighbors, right? In Hong Kong, we have, uh, in Hong Kong, we have uh, 7 million, uh, 7.5 million people. Yes. We have uh, 10, 18 hole course courses. When I combine the nine holes, you know, then right, we, make okay. it, we make it probably like 10, 10, 18 hole courses. Right. Singapore with 5.7 million people got 20. Let really? Me, yeah, let me, give a, let me give you an example to, uh, on the other extreme. Um, Ireland, that has 7 million people. They have 400 courses. Wow. Yes. So I think... 400, that's four, 40 times more than we have. 400. Korea, 15 million people, 500 courses. Wow. Japan... Um, 125 million people, 2,500. 2,500? Yes. That's many. US, 15,000 courses. Well, so Hong Kong is very short in terms of courses, and we make it to one in the 60. It, it is. I mean, to be very honest with you, I, I, I always wear this badge, you know, with pride. And actually, our peers, other golf associates in the world, other um, um, volunteers, officials that love golf, right? They always give us a pack, some, a pack on, the, on our back, you know, whenever they, uh, whenever they see us. Because with very limited uh, resources, we, we actually developed the, ball, the, the sport mm -hmm. tremendously well in Hong Kong. Right. Just now you mentioned we have like 10 courses in Hong Kong. Okay. Um, how good are our courses? Are they on par with other international courses? I mean, everybody would have heard the Scotland St Andrews Link, for example. How good are we compared to the rest of the world? Our courses are very, very famous. Um, so the, we have... Uh, um, Starting with uh, the Hong Kong Golf Club, with our courses in Fanling um, that hosts the Hong Kong Open, Hong Kong Ladies Open, mm -hmm. those are renowned world, renowned world premier courses. So we have international events in Hong Kong that has a lot of attention. Well, Hong Kong Open, for, ex um, um, for example, it is one of the two professional events that is held in the same course, same place, consecutively for over 50 years. Wow. The our peers is the Masters at Augusta. Right, so we do have an heritage. Oh, we, we, um, um, and we do, and you know, our, our, our public courses, Khao Sai Jiao, especially the North Course, is tremendously, um, it's done tremendously well. Uh, Clearwater Bay, Clearwater Bay is also a tremendous course um, that also holds uh, international tournaments. And when we say international tournaments, it's just not professional tournaments. With our limited resources, we also host a lot of amateur tournaments, okay. important to tournaments in Asia Pacific, in top, important tournaments worldwide, and we were supposed to hold the, host the 2020, um, what we call the World Amateur Team Championship. Mm -hmm. 70 mm -hmm. countries, um, three men, three women from each okay. team, but unfortunately we couldn't do it because of right. the social unrest at the right. Captain Nathi, before yeah. we go to a break, I'm going to uh, ask you a very spot-on question. Yes. Because I mean, golf is considered by some as a sport mainly for the elite, so naturally, we often hear these statements of saying why golf is not accessible to the public. I'm not sure whether that's myths, for example. Firstly, golf is not a sport. How do you answer that? 
golf is not a sport. Wow, I mean, for the, the for the long game, if you don't have the physical strength, it's probably you cannot hit the ball that far. For example, Tiffany, she can squat 150 pounds in repetition. Right. This is part of this part of her daily daily routine. Okay. And um, we uh, when we had uh, the TV crew covering us in Olympics, the first comment I got is. How come you guys walk so fast on the course? Right. Said, well, right. <laughs> Second one, yep. golf is an expensive sport. It's only for the wealthy. How do you answer that? Supply and demand. Okay. If we are in the island, in Ireland, you can play a round of golf in less than, with less than $100, right. and two days are free. Golf is a very slow game. Well, I will invite you for a round. And, 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 and let's see, you know, in four and a half hours, you actually get to do a lot. Okay. Yeah. Next one, golf is for older people. Well, I think uh, it's actually great. Older and younger people can play together. And with the handicap system, it's actually a great, great family sport you know, as well. So it's educated for old people as well as young people. OK. Golf is very subject to the weather. Well, it is. Um, but then uh, that's why, you know, that's why we need different type of, uh, uh, of courses. Courses that got good drainage, courses that uh, okay. would, uh, would fare weather like uh, the, the, the wet weather uh, well in Hong Kong. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Next one. Golf is not very popular amongst ladies because of the sun. What do you say to that? I think, uh, well, I mean, uh, I, I see a lot of uh, ladies golfer and they do know how to protect themselves. Okay, maybe we'll have a break and don't go away. <music> Welcome back. We have been talking with Mr. Kenneth Lam the president of the Hong Kong Golf Association, about golf in Hong Kong and his recent experience with Tiffany Chan at the Olympics. I think he has busted some of the myths around golf. And now I'd like to move on to the question of how golf offers advantages to other sports. Do you have any points on that? Well, I think we do have some insights to share. First, I want to start by saying that, you know, um, we, I, I personally and uh, we involved in golf, we have tremendous respect, you know, for other, for other sports as well. Mm -hmm. um, so um, um, we share a lot of things in common. Maybe some characteristics of golf that some, you think that offers more than other sports. Well, I think one, one, one thing is uh, golf, I think is a the sport that has a lot of tradition. We talk about uh, etiquette discipline, mm -hmm. even before you set foot on the course. Mm -hmm. So actually parents uh, love it because uh, um, for the youngsters, they would know how to respect the game, mm -hmm. respect others right. before they even practice you know, the sport. And I think going, I think in developing the sport, one, one, one big advantage that we see is um, when we get uh, youngsters, when they get to 13, 14 years old, they might not have to face the tough decision of whether to go full time. Right. at the point in time. Because I think golf is one of the uh, rare sports still allow youngsters to pursue their academics as well as uh, the passion in golf at the same time. Right. Uh, for example, the, it is one of our ob objectives. It's a firm objective in the golf association that mm -hmm. our top juniors, we should help them to get into the best schools possible. Mm -hmm. The schools also help us you know, to cultivate their skills. Uh. Okay. Uh, it, 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 is, it is a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. um, but we also want you know, opportunities you know, for our youngsters to be exposed to the okay. uh, highest level ed education. So this, so this is great. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Captain, maybe we'll move on to another topic. Yeah. That is our title of the show is, should golf be promoted more in Hong Kong? As I'm sure you're aware, in Hong Kong, business is always at the forefront, at our minds. And I've heard that from some friends that golf is being used as an adjunct to business as you can have confidential business discussions during golfing without people's ears dropping. How true is this? Well, uh, golf is a very popular sport, right? So the people use it for multiple uh, purposes. So it would be the, for, for your enjoyment, it could be for business. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if people would want to choose you know, to use golf you know, as a the business tool, fine. But then you know, my, my remark is, um, if you want to use it as a tool, you make sure that you, know, you love that kind, your, your kind of part because you will have to be stuck with him or her for four and a half hours. Right. This is another thing. Yeah. One of my friends who are in human resources said to me, very often the executive may use this opportunity to get to know whether a candidate, should, whether they are suitable for the job. For example, as you said, they have a chance to observe them, close up to get an idea what their background, their manners and their general behaviour over, over four hours. So do you recommend your own children to learn golf for that purpose? Well, I think I would actually recommend my, uh, um, anyone, you know, if you want to know 
the other side better, you can actually invite them for a round of golf, you know, and you can see a lot of uh, different characters. Right. Yes. After four hours, it's quite a long time. It, 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 it's a lot, you know, and you can do a lot, you know, with uh, in terms of etiquette, you know, in terms of what you do, and you learn a lot about the person. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. So, Captain, I'm sure you obviously agree that golf should be promoted further. How can you tell our viewers why you think so? Well, I think we actually covered uh, some of the points. Um, there has to be a reason why golf is a very popular sport and it's a popular, it's a sport, you know, welcomed by our parents. And it's a sport that actually, you know, the Asian does uh, very well. Okay. And I mean, we have people, the, uh, we have Tiffany, um, we have uh, um, Jason that I mentioned, right? Um, but just sticking with, uh, with the Olympics, just on the ladies' front, um, Rio, the medalist, mm -hmm. they were the Inby Park, Lydia Ko of Korean descent representing New Zealand okay. and now own the Feng Shan Shan. Shan Shan was actually the world number one you know, for the seven months. You know. he, uh, she's from Guangdong, right? She's from Guangdong, yeah. And uh, this year, um, Nettie Carter from US won, but then the second place uh, went to the local the Japanese uh, Yunami, and, mm -hmm. then a, the, and then Lydia Ko also won the third place. So they all sounds like I mean, Asian descent. Shan Shan finished eighth. And then the other, actually the other, uh, an, another Guangzhou native, uh, Lin Xiyu, um, she is uh, the second girl representing China, all Guangzhou natives. And so you know, together with Tiffany, we all speak uh, Cantonese. Oh, really? I, think, I, I think it's a sport that we can, uh, we, can, we can win medal. And by the way, on the men's side, CT Pan of Taiwan, he, he won a seven-man playoff. Mm -hmm. he, he, he prevailed over the likes of Rory McIlroy, Colin Murugawa, Hidaki, the Matsuyama, to win the third place. In, uh, um, in, 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 in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. It's a sport that we can excel. Right. I'm sure some of the viewers will say, mm -hmm. your sport will they will argue that it only involves a very small population of a society. Do you agree? It is supply and demand. I'm pretty sure that if you would offer me double the resources that we have in terms of courses, and even more importantly, you know, the, the number of driving ranges that we have, the population uh, um, of golfers in Hong Kong would grow exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, I think we previously just mentioned that we have about uh, 100,000 you know, playing golf. I'm pretty sure that we can grow you know, to the 300,000, half a million, if you know, we were given more resources. Mm. I'm sure one of the arguments that the, the golf lovers would say that promoting golf will contribute to Hong Kong's economy and our status as a global city. I mean, how relevant is that? It is definitely relevant. I mean, Hong Kong, Asia, World City, um, and uh, for example, for the Hong Kong Open, each, each and every year, um, the tournament will be broadcasted to the 400 million uh, um, um, household. Um, and it's actually the put Hong Kong in the very the, um, popular, um, say, the uh, perspective, you know, from the very different point of view. And introducing Hong Kong not only as a financial hub, but also a city, you know, with uh, multiple uh, choices, you know, for people to, to come. And we work, you know, very closely with the uh, tourism board, the tourism commission, you know, to to promote to uh, to promote to promote, you know, the sport. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to ask you what what do you see as a long-term golfer, being an association, being a captain? What was the major hurdle in the development of golf? You mentioned a few times of the resources, but Hong Kong, we also have this issue of land issues. Yes. How do we balance it from your point of view? Well. I, first of all, I think uh, uh, myself, you know, involved in sports, you know, I think we do have a bit of uh, uh, ambition in terms of uh, striking a harmonious uh, society. And we totally appreciate that uh, um, for the place like Hong Kong, small with a lot of people, land use uh, is an issue that you know, has to be debated. However, it is very, very painful, to be honest, very painful for me to see that any sport or golf in particular, is pitched against land use mm -hmm. for housing as like a zero-sum game. It shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not expert, you know, in the in the in the alternative in the alternatives in the various options. You know, I mean, other experts offer that. But I, as a golfer, I go by statistics. Hong Kong is only 25% developed. Why can't we have golf, or why can't we have other sports? Whether you call it minority sports or whatever. Those sports help to bind the society together, help to inject positive energy to all of us. Look at the Olympics. Look, Look at the Olympics. Olympics. Yes, exactly. Look at the Olympics. I mean, this is, we were in awe during the, during the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And we are so happy. I am so happy. I can that feel sports, that now. I yeah, can feel that. Yes. That, sport, that, that sports you know, bind society together. 
Why should we be pitched against something unnecessarily? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be a zero sum game. Mm. I'm going to read some data to, for the benefit of our viewers yeah. that 32 hectares of the 172 hectare Fangling Golf Course, almost one fifth, is to be reclaimed by the authorities who plan to build at least 4,600 flats, of which more than half will be for public housing. As you just said, I'm, I'm sure you and many golfers and many of the sports sector are not very happy about that. So what are the arguments? Are you going to persuade a government to rethink about this possibility, this move? Well, there are lots of arguments, but I will tell you what the effects you know of that, right? Right now, the, if that uh, uh, eight holes of old course you know, is going to be is gone, they will set us back tremendously in our golf development. Currently, at Fan Lane, there are the three courses and uh, 120, 130 rounds played per annum. 45% of those rounds are played by non-members. A lot of those <coughs> are for our golf association programs. A lot of those are for our juniors to play on. If we don't have that facility, it is going to set us back. And Eugene, quite frankly, I think we need more courses rather okay. than less. So if it goes ahead, what options do you have? Well, I really do not want anything that thought, you know, but if that is the case, you know, we would work harder, you know, to see whether we can get more land mm -hmm. elsewhere. Um, In the midst of Hong Kong shortage of land? That's again, even more difficult, isn't it? But it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a zero sum game. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, but golf courses, you know, it takes a long time to mature. The old course is, uh, is the uh, second oldest course, you know, in uh, Asia and it's the host, you know, the venue of Our Ladies Open. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Tiffany won that and that's also part of the reason why she could appear in the uh, Olympics. Okay. So maybe in the last part of the show, we'll talk about, we all, mm -hmm. I always like to talk about the future. Yeah. Um, with the recent success of Olympics, I mean, you can see sports that like swimming, fencing, table tennis, cycling is attracting a lot of funding. Mm -hmm. So how do you plan? from the Golf Association point of view, to write on this success while sports is in the limelight of the Hong Kong community right now? Well, we actually do not go too far away from our plans, right? Um, um, I think uh, you must have seen it, you know, Golf the left, the family is like a pyramid. Mm -hmm. At the base, we popularize the sport. We introduce the sport, you know, through the um, Golf for School programs, mm -hmm. uh, um, through introductory days. But then going up to the elitist part would be the likes of uh, Tiffany Jason, you know, playing, uh, playing, playing, playing the very, very top uh, level. But that's a big, big, big middle part okay. that the Golf Association has to play a lot of attention, both with software okay. and hopefully we have sufficient you know, hardware to, uh, mm -hmm. up to grow. So, 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 so basically, we have, basically, we need the sport, we need the sport to be more popular um, um, with school. And right now, you know, we are, we are already you know, right. part of uh, Hong Kong, the school's sport okay. um, Captain, uh, I'm going to ask you a very yeah. quick question, answer me yeah. quickly. For, I mean, for parents, they have to pay for their education, a lot of extracurricular activities. Yeah. Is it very difficult for, for kids to pick up the sports? Because, I mean, you could buy a set of clubs and as they grow older, you could have buy another set. Would there be any subsidy to help the parents? I, I would say right now with a very united uh, golfing community in Hong Kong, in, um, having golf equipment, golf equipment for um, introductory purposes would not be a deterrent you know, for mm -hmm. anyone, anyone in Hong Kong okay. to pick up right. golf. Right, last thing I want to ask you, for an even shorter question. <laughs> with Tifty appearing in two Olympics, what are the chances of getting a medal in the 2024? Well, I think with uh, the, way, uh, the way we do it, the, our commitment, okay. yes, we always have a chance. All right. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Ken, for your very interesting discussion. I think tonight your sharing has given all our viewers a very good understanding of how God has, God has and continues to contribute to Hong Kong's success as a global city. Thank you for joining us. Have a good week and good night.